Hello, I am Flavio Ribicchini and I welcome you to this interview at EuroPCR 2025 with me, Dr. Margaret McEntergaard from the Columbia University in, in New York and two Olsen from the Rix Hospitalet in Denmark, two principal investigators of recently released trials that we are going to discuss with them. Margaret, ladies first, your NPower trial, it's unique. Please explain us the main objectives and results. Thanks, Flavio. So we know that women are underrepresented in all the coronary PCI trials, usually about 20% of the population. And that was also true in the Disrupt CAD trials of IVL. So we decided to conduct a trial in female patients only, prospect of single arm study, basically to equalize the data sets in women and in men. So we designed a trial of 399 women who came to the cath lab and were adjudicated to the operator wanted to treat their calcified lesion with IVL. At that point, the patient entered the trial and the trial was designed with an IVL first strategy. So essentially you went into the case with a plan to use IVL as your calcium modification strategy. In terms of the outcomes, we had an efficacy outcome and a safety outcome. So safety outcome was cardiac death, MI, and ischemia driven TLR. And the efficacy outcome was successful stent delivery and deployment residual stenosis of less than 30% and the absence of target vessel failure. And in terms of how the trial went, we recruited four or five months ahead of, of target, which was amazing. And we managed to include 70% female PIs, encouraged a lot of young new PIs to get involved in clinical research. And using this IVL first approach, we were able actually to use that strategy in over 90% of the cases. So, and, and, and also in the, the nine, 10% where we weren't able to use it, 7% had atherectomy up front and a small proportion, about 2% had either cutting or scrolling up front. We wanted it to be really a real world scenario. So the patients were very high complexity clinical patients and very high complexity lesions. So very long segments of calcium, about 44 millimeters. And we were also able to see that after we used IVL, there was a very low need to use adjunctive technology. So only two or 3% of patients then needed either cutting, scoring or atherectomy after the IVL device. And in terms of the outcomes, so cardiac death, ischemia driven TLR, spontaneous MI, all about one, 1.5%. And then in terms of procedural MI, which is an interesting thing we can discuss, if we use the sky definition, it was 9.5%. 9.5, 9.6%, but half of that was just troponin release without any clinical sequelae or clinical signs. And if we used universal definition MI, it was 4.5%, which aligns with a lot of the recent calcium studies. So nearly 400 women, first intention was to go with IVL, yeah. which was managed in more than 80% yeah. of cases, yeah. small vessels, women, difficult cases, excellent performance, and no need to overdo after stenting in, in this trial. So yeah. this is fantastic data. We move to two. Yours, it's a randomized trial. Uh, so objectives, results, conclusions. So the objective of the Bali trial is a randomized trial in severely calcified arteries. So any planned PCI in a severely calcified artery. So they were randomized to a strategy of using RVL as early as possible or conventional strategy, which could be any specialized balloon, the use of rotational atherectomy, which allowed in both arms. And uh, we recruited in nine centers, 200 patients, um, had a feasibility of 100%, so all randomized to IVL, received IVL. And, uh, and the end point of the trial was a combined end point of procedural success, which was defined as successful stent delivery uh, and a residual area stenosis below 20%. All was OCT guided, so, that, so this was on, on intravascular imaging uh, residual area stenosis. And that was combined, that endpoint was combined with the clinical endpoint of target vessel failure at one year. So they were followed up at one year, and we actually did, after collecting the clinical endpoint, we did a follow up angio with, uh, with redo OCT at one year. Um, so we just presented it, and, and uh, we show in. in to, to, cut the story short, that, that IVL was superior to the conventional therapy, even in a population of patients where we needed to do rotational atherectomy in 30% of patients, also before being able to do the IVL. But uh, we had a 31% reduction in the primary endpoint mm -hmm. uh, at one year with, uh, with no safety signal uh, between the groups. Okay, so two different studies testing the same device 
uh, there are some issues that I guess our colleagues will be very interested in making it clear. Procedural success, very different because different definitions. You said 20%, 30% area, 20% no, area. 20% area. Okay, and you said 30% residual stenosis. Yeah. That makes a big difference because if we see the results, it seems that the therapy was hardly achieving the success. But of course, this is because of different definitions. Yeah. Another thing, you went directly in most of the cases with the IVL device, you required in a very important percentage of cases to pre-treat the lesions either before IVL or before balloons with rotational atherectomy. Are these patients very different? What, what, what's the explanation for that? So I don't think they're necessarily very different. I think, um, it'd be interesting what Joe says, but whether it was more of a strategic <coughs> upfront decision to use atherectomy or truly the atherectomy was needed to deliver the IVL? Well, per the protocol, I think our strategy was quite similar to what you tried to, to do because it was mandated to, to try to do IVL as early as possible before doing anything else. But I think the difference is selection. So our patients were selected based simply on having severe, really severe angiographic uh, um, calcifications. And in your study, the, the trial operator had to have chosen, I would like to do IVL in this case. Yeah. And that, that, I think that, that changes the selection. Yeah. And also use the more modern catheter. Most of our patients were treated with the uh, earlier version. Okay, a lot of information to think about. But before leaving, I want to make clear on another point. One of the most, uh, let's say, interesting characteristics of the IVL technique is safety. Mm. We are not using high pressure, so we believe that the risk of rupture, which is one of the worst problems in calcified lesions, will be lower. Yeah. There are ruptures in the studies. Can we get into rapidly into detail what happened? Yeah, so actually we found, and despite the cohort being really complicated, uh, the cases and having lots of comorbidity and extensive disease and a significant proportion, about a third of the patients had multivessel disease treated in our trial as well. Despite that, the procedural complication rate was really low. It's amazingly reassuring. So 2.6% had a type D dissection, no e E's and F's, all fixed by stenting. And there was three perforations in 399 patients, again, all fixed with any ongoing clinical sequelae, no other procedure-related complications. Um, so I was really surprised and reassured by how safe IVL was in this really kind of complex uh, cohort of patients. Margaret, th the perforations were related to the IVL, to the wire, to the stent, to the post-dilation? Yeah, so two post-dilation related and one, one wire perforation. Okay, okay. So. and in your study? Yeah, the first thing to say is that the numbers are really small. We had five perforations recorded uh, or resolved. Two of them were wire perforations, and uh, the two others were instant uh, perforations during standing or during post dilatation. Okay. One was uh, just before the stent. So, do, do you think that being more attentive with intravascular imaging before going high pressure or overexpanding the stent would have? Spare some complications? Yeah, I completely agree. I think that paying attention to when you've done enough and not ah. pushing too hard, I think I think that, that's a real signal that comes from when you get your perfs when you're post -delayed. Indeed, we come back to the added value of intravascular imaging yeah. in calcified yeah. if, if I can just add, I think uh, you will run into some complications with this very complex type of patient. But the safety signal that stood out for me was that one year mortality in the IVL arm was zero. Yeah. Okay, so we run into the conclusions. I think it's very important to underline that this is the first randomized trial comparing two dedicated technologies. It's a superiority trial. Yours is the first in the type doing a study on females only in very complex populations. We need to have more data related to calcified lesions, calcified patients and dedicated device. Thank you very much for having sharing this with, you, with us today to Margaret, have a nice day in Paris. Thanks, Thank you Thanks. very much for following us.